Hi, I'm Thespo with Resin Bell YouTube, and today we're going to be working on a thrift flip with Roy Cycle Designs tissue paper. Um, I picked up this sign, it's a all wood sign at the thrift store, and we're going to be turning it into a candle tray, so stay with me. Okay, so we're going to take this tray, it's not a tray, it's a piece of art that you can hang on your wall, and it's one of those kind that is made of, it's all one piece basically. It's got wood around the edges and it has wood in the bottom. And you could definitely take something like this, paint it with some uh, chalk paint and then cover it with all kinds of different beautiful designs from Roy Cycle Designs just to create a uh, beautiful piece of artwork. But today we're going to be flipping this over and we're gonna turn it into a candle tray because it's a nice long skinny piece and it will be great to set on a coffee table or a sofa table something like that so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these hardware off your paint so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the background with the white chalk paint and um, so I'm just going to open this up here Okay, now that this is dry, um, we can move on to adding our first layer. First layer, I'll get into that, what layers are what, um, after a little bit, but the first layer is going to be using this uh, Roy Cycle tissue paper, and this is called Butterfly Floral, and it has a be some beautiful designs on it. So, for the most part, I'm going to be using this section for the base of the tray. Now, I'm going to be using resin, and I'm going to be creating some different levels and I'm going to show you how to do that very easily um, so we can kind of get a three-dimensional effect and we'll go over that as we go. Uh, so I'm going to be using a product called Quick Coat and this is going to glue my first layer down and um, that dries super fast and I uh, just like it better than Mod Podge. Um, but anyway, we're going to cut this down first to the size that I need it in the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it basically where I want it and then I'm going to take my finger making sure that this doesn't move around and I'm going to slide it across the edge and that's going to show me basically, let me get down here and show you, okay you can kind of see the crease that I created that shows me exactly where I need to cut and so you can see this crease right here. Okay, so now that I've got this cut out, I can go ahead and adhere it, and then I'm saving this because I'm going to be using this later on in the project. Okay, so now I'm just going to put some of my quick coat on one side. You don't have to use a lot of this stuff. It's fairly thin product and it smooths on very easily. But you do have to work kind of quickly uh, because it does dry pretty quickly. Um, quite a bit faster than uh, Mod Podge. Get it all smoothed out into an even layer. We're just going to slowly rub the tissue paper over. Now I have this little um, thing, and this is just an old gift card that I have wrapped some uh, felt around, and that makes a great little squeegee to kind of get out all of the, any of the bubbles or wrinkles or anything. And you don't want to press super hard, but the, um, uh, the felt helps it to slide over the paper very easily. is a great little tool and it's super easy to make. You can even get um, 
stick on a adhesive felt that you can wrap around an old gift card or credit card. And then I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go on to the resin. I'm fussy cutting out some of the images from the leftover paper. And these are going to become our layers. Now, if you've never tried resin before, I would recommend you getting a small amount of resin and doing a couple of little projects, maybe like a coaster or um, a piece of jewelry, just something small that you can get a feel for the resin and how it works. And um, the main point that I want to stress when you're working with resin is not to be afraid of it. It is doable and you can do it. The second thing I want to stress is mixing. Mix your resin thoroughly. That is going to save you 99% of your problems. Uh, if you have any, um, if you don't mix it right, you can get parts that cure and parts that don't cure and it can ruin an entire project. So mainly when you're using resin, make sure you mix well. So these are going to be just some different layers. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm going to pour a thin layer of resin and allow, allow that to cure. And then the second layer, after that resin has cured, I'm going to be putting on, doing some more Mod Podge, um, putting some different layers and elements on and letting those dry and then putting another layer of resin on. And then you can do another layer and add more elements and you can get a very cool three-dimensional effect with your different elements by layering them between layers of resin because that resin will hold it up just just you know just a tiniest bit but it will look really neat once you once it's all finished so that's what we're going to be doing today okay so the next step before I put the first layer of epoxy resin on I'm going to go ahead and seal the top of this this is pretty much dry now I'm going to go ahead and seal the top of it with some more of this quick coat I'm just going to do a fairly thin layer just to make sure that it is all sealed and um, because when you put epoxy resin on paper, it makes it translucent. And while the tissue paper is fairly, fairly translucent, I don't want it to be completely clear because I don't want to bring up the, you know, the white paint on the bottom. Um, I do want it to retain uh, the printing that is on the top. I really want it to be able to pop and show up. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and seal this will make it keep its opaque look. So we're going to do this with a very, very thin coat and uh, then we can uh, let that dry again, which won't take very long because this stuff dries pretty quickly. And then we can move on to pour pouring the resin in, uh, mixing it up and pouring our first layer. And so between the two part epoxy, this is a one to one ratio. So you pour one part of this and one part of that equal parts. And then you mix it, you mix it. You don't want to whip it because you don't want to try to get any air bubbles in it, but you want to mix it thoroughly for at least two minutes. Um, you can see as you're mixing it, it will become clearer and clearer. Um, if you see any kind of like swirly wisps in there of kind of like a, a pearlescent look, then it's not mixed enough. You want to make sure you scrape your sides, scrape the bottom, and mix thoroughly. Keep mixing and mixing. The other thing I want you to be aware of is you do need to wear gloves. And I usually wear a respirator that is good for organic vapors. That is handy because you can become sensitized to resin over time. So you want to limit your exposure as much as possible and protect yourself. So we're going to go ahead and mix up two, one of each part. So I've got side B in and now I'm going to pour the same amount of side A. Mix it, I'm going to get you closer so you can see the swirls in it. You can really see how all that's just kind of swirled. That means it's not mixed. So you're just going to start mixing it. And you want to mix it slowly. But you don't have to go too slow. And you want to scrape your sides. And scrape the bottom. All over the bottom. So you're just going to keep mixing. And you can see how it's kind of becoming... Um, it kind of looks pearlescent right now. 
what you want to do is you want to mix until it's clear completely clear like water okay so now that I've got my resin mixed up I'm gonna go ahead and pour this Okay, so now that I've got that poured in, I'm going to take my heat gun. And I'm going to go over it to pop the bubbles and to kind of move it around and make sure it's nice and level. And then we're going to let it set and cure uh, for about six hours, four to six hours until it's firm and not sticky anymore. And then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now this has been curing for about six hours and it's not fully cured, but it's cured enough that we can put the next step on. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. So this one, I think I'm going to place about here. Nope. I'm gonna brush this on. And this dries clear, so have to worry about it too much. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry and then we can put on our last coat of uh, resin. Okay, so this is dry now and um, I'm gonna mix up some more resin and we'll do the funnel pour and once it cures, it should, should be done. All right, so the next thing we need to do is just let it cure for another six to 12 hours and then it should be ready to go. I'm gonna give you some close-up shots of what it looks like with the kind of three-dimensional style. It's kind of hard to see from up high. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there's, you know, this piece here is up on top. It just kind of gives it a subtle three-dimensional look. You can kind of see that this piece is kind of over top the butterfly is kind of floating there. You can see kind of under it. Which is kind of cool. And then that piece of flower there. Too cool. Okay, so now that this final coat of uh, resin is completely cured, I'm just going to take a little sanding file and go around the edges on this. Just kind of distress it a little bit bring some of those wood tones through and kind of go with this kind of uh, natural look that's happening here. I'm just going to hit the edges just a little bit. Okay, so I think I'm finished with this. You can see there's some layering happening here. It's a little harder to see on camera, but you can really see it um, in person. Especially this side. This just kind of pops up, so... Fun little um, thing you can do with these, um, and you could just keep on going and keep adding layers, um, you know, up to like five or six layers and really get some depth to it. Especially if you've got more of the same piece of tissue paper, then you could cut out different elements of the different items and kind of stack those. So you can get a really super 3D look with this.
And thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate you being here. Thank you to Roy Cycle for choosing me to be on their creative design team. I'll be having more projects like this in the future. And hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and that notification bell so you know when I post a, vi a new video each and every time. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!